root ball club. So it's a sapling yep. from a hackberry. It's dug up and sanded down. Uh, then fire hardened. And it's pretty... So it's just wood? It's just wood. You can and you can use it to kill people or animals. The animals, yeah. <laughs> we don't like saying killing people, but yeah, I'm sure it happened. <laughs> yes, that's pretty good. So this is a club. A club. That a was, root uh, ball club. When did they start using these? It's a very early oh, weapon, the root ball club. Okay. So we don't know for sure. So we're talking about ten thousand years, twenty. Um. Well, everything that we have here represents the year fifteen seventy. 1570, okay. Um, I don't know when the earliest they would have used the Okay. I do know that they, it is a, a weapon that they would have, a lot of the earlier Native Americans would have made. So we think about 500 years ago was the, the long bow. Okay. So, so 500 that. years ago, okay. or, okay, so it's like 1600. Yeah. So that's when the Europeans... Yeah, somewhere between 500 and 1,000 years ago. Okay. Sorry. So they already had the bow and arrow before the Europeans came in. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we have our uh, practice arrow there. Yeah. Wow, that's actually pretty nice. Hello. And then this is our, our oh, large game. Large game. Mm -hmm. so, What's the difference? Because this can actually kill. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so practice arrow is what the boys would first get when they were learning. Probably would have hurt getting hit by one, but I don't think it would kill you. Okay. Um, and then large game like our deer, this is our white tailed deer pelt here, they would use um, arrowheads like that. Smaller How do they game. put these, uh, put the stick and the stone together? Did they? Looks like there's a notch here. Yeah, there's usually a notch okay. woven, similar you know, to a notch at the top, that you can fit it in, put some pine pitch in, and then use the sinew, which yeah. is the connective tissue, the muscle, okay. to the bone in the animal to, oh. to lash it on okay. tight. And as it dries, it would tighten to make it very secure. Do you guys use it? Like, do you use the bone? No. And we have our blunt tip arrow, which is for stunning small game. Did they do that? Mm-hmm. Oh. So, yeah, you, you don't want to use a large... Why not? ...an arrow. You could... What You're ruining the pellet. Okay. Uh, you could be losing your arrowhead in the animal. Okay. Uh. So it's for something small like a rabbit or... A squirrel or a muskrat or something like that, and then use it to to chip at your flint. Okay. We have two flint knot things here. This is our our knife. Yep. And again, it's notched and held in with pine pitch and sinew. Yep. And then our scraper. Okay. Which is similarly made. Scrapers um, were used what for, for farming? Scraping. Okay, for scraping animals. So two. To process the hide, you have to remove the hide from the animal with your knife. And then you take your scraper. And there's a membrane that you need to remove. So this would be used to scrape off the membrane. And then if you needed to scrape off the fur, you do that as well. And these are all real, right? These are all real uh, hides. Animals. Yes. Okay. So That's they would good. use the brains of the animals for tanning the hide. They would make take the brain out, mash it, mix it with wood ash and water, like a, and make a slurry. And after they had scraped the hide, they would soak it in that in that solution. And then what does what does that do? There's there's a certain kind of a, a enzyme in the brain that that tans the hide. It makes it soft. So you would wring it out and wow. then stretch it. And then you'd have to work it smooth. How did and they, they figure that a, out? A big reamer yeah. to to work it smooth. I don't know how they came up with it. Right. I don't. I honestly don't. And I'm sure there's a, probably some kind of folklore how they came up with it. But it, it probably was just trial and error. Like most right. most human early human things happened. So this is this is commercially processed, but you can achieve a nice soft 
texture and leather using the brain. Okay, using tanning. the brain. Mm -hmm. um, and once it's processed and soft, even if it gets wet, it'll remain soft. Okay. So if you didn't process your hide like that, you would get your raw hide. And this is raw hide. Okay. And this is buffalo raw hide. And it's two layers. And this is a shield. Okay. That's worn on the left side of the body. Okay. So we have some ash paint here. Mm -hmm. They would take bare fat and wood ash, or mix it together for the paint. Why was that like a symbol of the tribe or something? Um, well, we don't know if these have any significance. The, the gentleman who made it for us, he might have been just decorating it, but they certainly could have, okay. would have painted symbols on. Okay. For and that for would decoration as well. And that shield would actually prevent. Deflect. Okay. Yes. But it would go through it if it comes directly in contact, right? Probably. Okay. Did they use any other type of, um, like, maybe like wooden shield to, to prevent them from the arrows? I'm not sure. Okay. About that. Okay. Yeah. You would straighten out your, your trap. I think I got it all tangled up. All right. So you would, ideally you would have laid it flat. Yeah. And probably propped it across okay. flat, and then once the animal runs into it, it and can't catches, get out. It would snare it in there. So, like, if you leave a skunk skin or whatever mm -hmm. for in there, more skunks would come in. Oh, uh, I don't think they would. Okay. We just put the skunk in there because a, a trap like this would be used for small game. Okay. And. A skunk would probably wander in. Oh, a skunk would come in to catch something and else. You would catch, okay. Yeah, you'd, you I wouldn't see. want a skunk. Okay. But if you caught a skunk, okay, you wouldn't yeah. let it go. Okay. You would you would use the meat. Okay. 